Hello, here's a fun project for you to create using watercolour and salt. I have been inspired by the cherry blossoms that I see on my daily walks and I really enjoyed painting them outside last week. So here I am in the studio painting cherry blossoms and I have used something different today that is salt for some granulation and some texture. So let's get started. I begin by wetting the paper with some water and I'm using a flat brush here. You do not need to use a flat brush, it's just easy to use flat brush when you're wetting a surface. And then I start off with some cerulean blue into the wet surface. And you can see that I'm leaving a little bit of unpainted areas in between, so I've got plenty of white space the blue is for the sky in the background, so I'm going around the space where I like the tree to be. Next I'm going to place some permanent rows into the white space that I had left for the tree. The paper is still quite wet, so you can see that the paint is just feathering out, creating a beautiful effect already. Now I'm going to use some salt. The salt that I'm using is basic table salt and it's quite fine in texture. Uh, you can use rock salt as well and it would give you a very different texture altogether. So I'm just gently sprinkling it over the areas where I like a little bit of lighter area. So what the rock salt or the salt does is the pigment moves away from that area giving space for the salt and as it dries it would give you a very beautiful granulated effect. So let's wait for this to dry. Before that I like to add a little bit more pigment, this time less water, more pigment on my brush, simply dropping it into the area where I think I need a little bit more darker area. I'm also going to do the same thing for cerulean blue, so getting a little bit of cerulean blue onto my brush and just dropping it into the background. So you can see that the blue and rose is mixing together to give me a very nice purple shade, which is fine, you can let the two colours blend into each other. And also you can add more salt and pigment according to your needs, see how it works for you. You can play around and see what sort of effect it gives you. While I'm waiting for it to dry and see how it turns out, I'm going to sketch another cherry blossom and this time I'm not wetting the surface, I'm starting off straight with some permanent rose and I'm going to create very dynamic quick brush strokes for the foliage. I'm just going to mix permanent rose with a little bit of ultramarine blue for some deeper shades of rose and dropping that in as well creating a deeper value. And then adding some salt over it just like how we did for the first one. And now for one more cherry blossom, this time I'm starting off with quick splatters using my brush. So simply load your brush with some permanent rose and flick it onto your paper or do a quick swish and the paint will just fall on your paper. It can, it can be quite messy but it is quite enjoyable to splatter paint and see how it works on paper. After this I'm going to use a spray bottle with water to spray over the splattered paint. 
you can do it in any direction that you like or any direction that you would like the paint to flow. While it's still wet, you can also add in some ultramarine blue mixed with permanent rose to create a deeper area for the foliage. I'm also going to add some quick lines for showing the tree trunk and the branches using the tip of my brush and using just one color the color that I'm using here is sepia and just quickly doing the tree trunk and the branches. The paper is still quite wet so you can see that the top part where nearer to the foliage the pigment is sort of feathering out so I might wait a little longer to add in more details of the branches in that area. I'm going to paint in the tree trunks and the branches for the other two cherry trees as well. The pigment that I'm using here is sepia and I'm using the tip of my brush to create very thin lines for the branches and the tree trunk as well and you can also let it bleed into the permanent rose color that you have used for the foliage and if it's still if the painting is still quite wet, if the foliage is still quite wet, uh, it is still okay to try and add some branches in, deliberately let the two colours bleed into each other. Briefly going back into the first tree trunk that I painted, the paper was still very wet at the time I started painting, but it's not as wet as it was at first, so I'm going to add in some more branches. It's not entirely dry yet, so even if I'm doing these branches, I can still see that um, the pigment is sort of feathering out. If you do like that sort of an effect, then by all means it's a great way of adding details. But I think I would still come back to this tree again and see if I can add more branches in between the foliage when it's a little bit more wet. At this stage it is still too wet for me to add any sort of details. So going back into the second cherry tree that I have been painting and dropping in some more pigment onto the branches, giving the right side of the tree a darker value in just to show some shadows, some darker areas on the tree. And if you notice the right side of the tree or the foliage is also quite dark compared to the top left. So just adding in some darker details. I can see how beautifully the granulation is taking place on this cherry blossom. I'm going to leave it to dry a little bit more. And for the last cherry blossom tree, or the first one that we did, it's considerably a little bit more dry compared to the other two cherry blossoms. And I absolutely love the way the salt has behaved with watercolors creating beautiful granulation. I am now going to add some branches and the details of a tree trunk again using the tip of my brush simply sketching it in with just one pigment and adding as many branches as I like. It is a very relaxing process of simply adding branches, trying to connect the foliage that I have painted with the branches. And you can also add some dark and light value onto the tree trunk, creating a nice texture to the tree trunk as well.
I'm going to quickly add in a little bit more deeper permanent rose and a little bit mixed with ultramarine blue to create a deep value of the same color. The pigment on the paper is still wet but I can still add in some more pigment. It is not as wet so you can see only certain areas of the paint is feathering out. I can add a nice layer of darker pigment there. I really don't want to paint too much uh, so that I don't move the salt and if I do move that the granulation would not happen so I'm being very careful by simply dropping in the pigment Going back to the last cherry blossom foliage I painted, I only used a spray bottle to spray some water onto the splattered paint and it has dried a little bit. I still can see some wet surface here so at this stage I'm going to simply add some salt and see how different it would be if it's added a little bit later. So adding a considerable amount of salt in the areas where I need lighter value and also going to add some more darker pigment for the tree trunks so right now that area is quite dry so I'm going to drop in some pigment for the branches and the finer details of the branches or you can even add how many ever branches that you like as I said, it's quite therapeutic to do just paint branches, trying to connect it to the foliage and the splatters that you created before. And with this, I am done with painting three cherry blossoms, three different ways, just exploring the different ways I can paint them and use the salt as well. And um, I can see that some of them are all, almost dry, especially the small cherry blossom that I painted the second time. You can see the granulation effect really well on that. The first one, I'm not really happy with it because I painted a little bit over it and the granulation is still happening so maybe when it's completely dry it would turn out to be good. The last one that I added salt in is working really well and I would wait for a little bit more time for it to completely dry and see the effect. Here's the first tree that I did with the blue background. The result is not as dramatic as I like it to be, but I still like the effect. The second one is the wet on dry foliage. The effect is very dramatic. And the last one with the splatters and the water spray bottle, the granulation was added much later I absolutely love the dramatic effect this tree has. So these are the three cherry blossoms that I experimented using watercolor and salt and I absolutely loved and enjoyed the process. I hope you will enjoy creating this too. Happy painting!